Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Dill, a team that we are fired up about heading into 2024. This UCF program, Gus Malzahn going and getting KJ Jefferson. This UCF offense is going to put up a lot of points on the board. And I think the big question for UCF is we know the floor is relatively high. When you can put up points like UCF can put up points, you're going to win a lot of football games. I think the question is what is the ceiling for this UCF team heading into 2024? If this defense takes a step, you're looking at one of the more dangerous teams that we see in the Big 12. Going to get into this depth chart, talk about where we like this UCF team, where we have some question marks, and take a look at the schedule, give our seal and give our floor for this UCF team. Fired up to get into it. Before we do, and as always, just want to say thank you to you guys and many of y'all who've been rocking with the fellas for the last couple of years know that you know, preseason predictions, these are some of the things that we love to do the most. Can't thank you guys enough for rocking with the boys. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. More importantly, for the UCF fans, whether we're leaving some players out that we need to add to our notebook or just you want to throw in your schedule prediction for this UCF team, drop it down in the comment section. We always learn a ton from you guys in the comments. And Dill, without further ado, I think we got to start with this UCF offense. A UCF offense that, at least in my mind, is fascinating where – it was phenomenal in 2023, but I think they can take some massive steps in 2024. You dig into some of the numbers. This was a UCF offense that averaged almost seven yards per play. That was top eight in the country, but only 29.9 points per game, which was 40th in the country because they were so bad in the red zone last year. I think before we even get into the names on this offense, if UCF can just clean it up a little bit in the red zone, this is an offense that takes a step in 2024. And I also think they obviously did that with quarterback being a little bit of a, an issue from a health standpoint, obviously. Yes. John Reese Pumley, when he was on the field, was good. But by the end of the year, he just felt like that season was wearing on him. And they asked that quarterback position to do a lot in the run game. And I think you kind of look, having K.J. Jefferson, I just think he's far more yeah, fit to do it. I mean, six foot three, 250 pounds, been kind of doing it for his whole college career, just taking a beating, being really physical. So I think, again, I, I just feel like he's a bit of a better fit. And I, Reese Plumley's a very good player. Obviously turned the ball over too much, but I think you look, K.J. Jefferson coming in, I just think he'll be in a much more sustainable position to kind of last that whole season under what Gus Malzahn wants to do. Perfect fit in this UCF offense. And you start taking a look at the backfield for UCF. Gus Malzahn obviously gets really dynamic in terms of how he wants to run the football. <laughs> I think this might be one of his best backfields that he's ever seen, right? K.J. Jefferson, we know what he can do with the football in his hand. R.J. Harvey a top five running back in the country, in my opinion. You pair him up with Penny Boone, that's about as violent and as big and as physical of a backfield that you'll see in the country. UCF's going to run the football a lot, and you can kind of just see them grinding down some opposing defenses. And I kind of piggybacking from what you were saying with Plumlee and K.J. Jefferson, I felt like at times UCF could not use the quarterback run game as much as they would have liked because Plumlee couldn't, couldn't really take the uh, the beating that K.J. Jefferson probably can take going into 2024. So I think you even see a little bit more of an aggressive approach in terms of how we're going to use the quarterback because we say it all the time with K.J. Jefferson. We're less worried about K.J. Jefferson getting banged up. We're a little bit more worried about the linebackers that are trying to tackle K.J. Jefferson getting banged up. So I, And that quarterback runs such an essential part of what Gus Melzahn does. I feel like it sets up some of his – again, like explosive plays in a lot of ways. Like you kind of see him getting guys out of position in them at being able, whether it's with wide receivers, whether it's with running backs, being able to take advantage of those moments and hit those big plays, which was such a staple of what he did at UCF last year. But also if you just go back through Gus Malzahn's career, that's kind of what he does. So again, not having that element in your game with that quarterback run, I think it's huge. I think it disrupts everything he wants to do. And you look at how UCF structures their offense. I mean, we just spent the first five minutes talking about the rushing attack, which was a top 10 unit in the country last year, averaged 5.7 yards per carry. That was number three in the country. Very effective run game. Hard to see that taking a step back in 2024. But I think what makes this US UCF team kind of so intriguing is when they do decide to throw the football, which is not very often. It was one of the more run heavy offenses that we saw in the country. Dill, they pushed the ball down the field. You look at UCF, they only threw the ball, what, 43% of the time, but
but they were 9.1 yards per pass attempt. That was number 11 in the country. The recipe for UCF, we are going to run the football, make you as a defense start rolling your safeties into the box to stop our rushing attack, and then we're going to push the ball down the field and make some explosive plays. And you look at how the UCF pass catch room is constructed. It is constructed to make big plays, right? Kobe Hudson coming back averaged over 20 yards per catch last year. You're bringing a guy in Jacoby Jones who is 6'3", 225 pounds, averages 17 yards per catch. Perfect fit in this UCF offense. You add a Jai Hall as a preferred walk-on, another big physical wide receiver that can work vertically down the field. I feel like UCF has you know, all the pieces kind of put in place for this UCF offense to be elite in 2024. You know, I don't want to overlook the Jacoby Jones kind of addition because I think you look, they have, you look at what Xavier Townsend and Kobe Hudson want to do. They are much more guys like you see they want them to get them in space, both really, really dynamic with the ball, can make guys miss. I think that's kind of how they drum up their explosiveness. But again, I do think with KJ Jefferson and the arm strength he kind of brings probably compared to what you had last year, I think you wanted a better, more capable downfield threat, let's say, a guy who really is good, working vertical, big, physical, fast. That's kind of what you get with Jacoby Jones. I think he rounds out that that receiver unit that, frankly, if you don't have him, you're looking at just a bunch of guys you kind of want to not just work underneath, but like get the ball in space and let them go to work. And it felt like UCF was looking for that wide receiver three. Like last year in the passing attack, it was Javon Baker, Kobe Hudson, or not a ton going. I'm a big fan of Xavier Thompson. I think going into year three, you see him play a little bit of a, a larger role. You're bringing redshirt senior Javarius Johnson. Though I think the last thing we got to talk about is the offensive line, which I think the floor is just so high for this unit. I mean, you look at the projected starting offensive line, redshirt senior, redshirt senior, senior, redshirt senior. So many guys have just played a ton of football during their collegiate careers you feel good that this offensive line is going to be solid at the very least, potentially a very good offensive line in the Big 12. Now, though, you start talking about this UCF team reaching their potential in 2024. It falls on the defensive side of the football. Wasn't great last year, specifically against the run. I mean, they gave up over five yards per carry. That was 114th in the country. Dill, they gave up over 200 rushing yards per game. I mean, inexcusable. And I think you can tell where UCF wanted this defense to get better because you look at just the names on the defensive line, Lee Hunter, Ricky Barber, and you got true sophomore Johnny Walker, who was very good coming out of high school. I, I look at the defensive line and say, I feel pretty good about what that unit is. It's pretty clear what Gus Malzahn wanted to improve, and that was the linebacker room, which was largely a disaster last year. You're bringing Ethan Barr, a redshirt senior. You're bringing Josiah P P uh, Pierre, excuse me, from Texas Tech, a redshirt senior. You're bringing Alexander from Idaho. They got a lot of names in the linebacker room. And if this unit can kind of take a step in the right direction, I think UCF can get a little bit better against the run, which is going to mean massive things for this UCF defense. You know, I wouldn't overlook the fact that they turned over that defensive coaching staff a little bit. Yeah, frankly. I look, that that team's too good up front, especially in that defensive line. They have a handful of guys I think you really can believe in, obviously led by Hunter and Barber. And to be that kind of inept against the run, I think it's a little surprising. And I don't know if that's how they're coaching that defense to work, whether they're – because it just felt like there were big creases too, yeah. too often and too many big plays. So, again, I mean, those two guys should be able to sit in holes, be tough, be physical against the run. I think they can play that way. So – Again, I think the combination of adding a handful of really veteran guys, like Ethan Barr and Josiah Pierre, are both really, really good players. Those are the two guys I'm kind of looking for to like set the tone, if you will, in that room. And you combine them with a good defensive line. There's no reason they shouldn't be a, a solid unit against strong. I'm not going to say they're going to be like Georgia, but they should be good enough. They I'm kind of with you, and I think you made a really good point with some of the coaching staff changes. I look at that UCF team on paper last year and say, no way that's a team that struggles against a run like they did, but but that was the case. I think a lot of it did have to do with the coaching staff as opposed to the personnel because the personnel wasn't, wasn't liability-type stuff in the front seven for UCF. They just didn't play – to their potential against the, in the linebacker room. Like I'm not going to defend them to the end of the earth. I didn't think that was great football. And I think you mentioned it, but they do clean it up. They obviously make the coaching staff changes. You got to think at the end of the day, that all comes together to create a solid unit. And then you look at the back end. I mean, that unit, those transfers they're bringing in, there's a handful really good. of guys who are like 
awesome. I mean, Ladarius Tennyson, I don't know why our lad's saying he's going to be a backup. He's going to play a ton of football. I think he is a really, really good safety. And then the other guy I love is Brandon Adams. I think you look at a long, long athletic, really good cover cornerback. I think that's a really pretty solid unit. And they are solid last year, so I think that unit's going to kind of hold, hold serve, if you will. Yeah, and two guys that I want to mention in the secondary, specifically stopping the run as well, Deshaun Pace, Ladarius Tennyson. I mean, those are guys that excel in the box being physical. So, again, you have some pieces even in the back end that might be able to help that run defense a little bit. Another guy kind of off the beaten track but kind of reading some spring notes, true freshman Jason Johnson. Sounds like he's going to be a guy that's going to contribute. Dill, I think we both feel pretty dang good about this UCF secondary. But again, you got to be able to stop the run, especially in a Big 12 conference where there's a lot of really good running backs. There's a lot of good rushing offenses. If UCF wants to be a team that competes in the Big 12, you have to be able to stop the run in 2024. Getting into the schedule, I think kind of a fascinating schedule. You take a look, your first three games, New Hampshire, Sam Houston at home, those should be wins. You go on the road at TCU. We just talked about this matchup a little bit at it's probably a toss-up game, but you lean UCF. Even though you're on the road at night, you go into your bye week, you get Colorado at home. Dill, those first three games are massive. If you can go 3-0 and going into your bye week, and then you host Colorado Coach Prime in the bounce house, it doesn't get any rowdier than UCF at home against Colorado. Might be a primetime game. And if you can get through that one, you're going on the road to the Florida Gators, which is the epitome of a toss-up game. It's really hard to win on the road in the swamp, but I think this UCF team, it, it, with the with the rushing offense, I, at least in my mind, they're capable of being a lot of football teams in this 2024 year. Well, yeah, there's just not games, I don't think, on their schedule that they, like, I just, oh, that's a loss. I mean, yeah. you look, when you score the way they're going to score, and I think, again, you upgraded the talent probably in many ways on that offensive side of the ball. You obviously, another year in that system, I Gus Milzahn's really, really good. I think when they're going to score, it's it's going to be tough for every team to match up with them. Again, I and you look, talk about defense that should shut this team out by any means. You talk about playing well on the road. A running game's travel. If you can run the football, that travels on the road. So you talk about going on the road to Florida. If there's a way to make that stadium go quiet awfully quick, it is running for 100 yards in the first quarter, which UCF is certainly capable of. And Florida was really bad against the run last year. Cincinnati at home should be a win on the road at Iowa state is one of those toss up games that you kind of just get a feeling that might be one of those games that kind of swings the big 12 rankings BYU at home. That should be a win. I think the biggest thing that I want to kind of point out before we close out is you see these two last couple of games, Arizona, Utah, those are probably your biggest big 12 matchups. You get them both at home Two West coast teams that have to travel all the way down to Orlando, Florida, Again, they're toss-up games, but if you're asking UCF, especially if this is a team that can get off to a good start, kind of be six and one, five and two, heading in down the stretch, it, it's going to be a rowdy environment. If those are competitive it. games down the stretch, those games will be absolutely rocking. I mean, that environment's going to be about as tough as you'll see in the Big Twelve, I think, and that'll be a huge thing. Obviously, if you start slow and and those games are a little sleepy, yeah, that can happen. That happens to everyone. But if they're in it for the thick of things for that conference title, yes. possibly a playoff spot, I mean, that you, that environment's going to be unreal. That's why I think the beginning of the season, a gettable early schedule is so big. I mean, if you can be in the Big 12 title race down the stretch when you host Arizona, when you host Utah, those games can go any direction, especially with how UCF can run the football and score points at, Fascinating team, a team that we're both high on heading into the Big 12. It's always difficult to predict games in the Big 12. We did our best still. I have the floor at 7-5. and five. I think it's an awfully high floor with how UCF can run the football, the ceiling. I got a 10-2, potentially a Big 12 title appearance. We'll cut it there. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We'll talk to y'all later.